Hi everybody. So uh was going through some of my comic book boxes and decided that uh I just grab a few b books and kind of go over maybe some of my favorite books in my collection. Uh right now, uh these are in no particular order. Most of them are just kind of as I grabbed them. Um and we'll just kind of run through these uh relatively quick. Uh so I hope you guys enjoy. Um so first up on this side, uh, this is probably the closest I'm ever going to get to the first appearance of Wolverine. Um, this is uh, basically just a reprint. And on this side, I've got um, Outcast uh, number one. Love that book. Love the TV show, too. If you haven't watched it, it's amazing. Um, then I got Wolverine 75. Uh, an older book, um, well, for me, whenever I was growing up, this run, uh, Fatal Attractions, was one of my favorite things whenever I was real little and was getting into comics. Um, so, I just always liked those books. Uh, Spider-Man 700, I just like, love this cover uh, with all the people that's ever worked on Spider-Man being in the background of the city. Um, this is probably one of the best... Hulk covers, in my opinion. I absolutely love that cover. Uh, it's incre I just think it's amazing. Um, and this is probably the closest I'll get to owning uh, Walking Dead number one. Um, it's basically just a reprint, but I really like it, so it's in here. Uh, X-Men Deadly Genesis number one, uh, with basically... Um, uh, it's a cover swipe of Giant Size X-Men number one, so I just really like that. Uh... That is just a really awesome uh, uh, Scotty Young cover. So, just really like that. Uh, this one, um, X Infernus, uh, I believe number one. Um, just a really awesome cover. Uh, Milk and Cheese. Um, I got a couple uh, books. Uh, there's number one. Um, I just, I love uh, Evan Dorkin stuff, so... Um, I really like that. I was growing up and that was hilarious to me because it was a cheese and milk carton that cussed. Um, then X and Furnace number three. Just another really awesome cover. Um, another book that I kind of... Oh, wait, while I'm here. More milk and cheese. Um, another book that I really liked growing up, uh, The Max. Um, was a really awesome cartoon too when that came out. Uh, I'm just going to set those over there for now. Uh, then I got another really awesome Scotty Young cover for X-Men. And um, when I was growing up, uh, these hollow foil covers um, and any of the chromium covers uh, were just kind of a big thing. A lot of people say they killed comics, but when I was a kid, these were some of my favorite comics to get. So that's the whole reason why you're going to see some of those in here. Um, just because I grew up with them and I still think they're awesome today. Uh, this is X-Men Legacy um, 275. It says it's the final issue. I can't remember if that was true or not, but uh, that was just a really amazing cover. A lot of these you're going to see are uh, some of the stories I liked, and most of them I have read, but there are some of these that I just really love the covers. So um, even though I've read the stories, the covers are mainly what I'm showing off today. Uh, then I got uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, number one. Uh, I was really kind of surprised. This book tends to go for a little bit, so um, it's always nice whenever you're flipping through your comics and you run across something you forgot you had and you find out it's worth a little bit of money, but it won't be going anywhere. It'll be staying in my collection for a while. So let me grab some more books here. Uh, like I said, they're in no particular order. I'm just kind of grab some books to show off um walking dead 100 the chromium version uh amazing spider-man uh 491 or 50 depending on which account you go with but it's just an awesome j scott campbell cover um then uh final crisis 3 um was it uh gosh i can't even tell you the name of the artist now jg jones uh was that who did these uh, and then Supergirl, 
yeah, J.G. Jones, I believe, did these covers. I'm going to have to look that up now because I'm not sure. Uh, I thought they were J.G. Jones covers, but I'm not seeing anything on these that say that one does not look like J.G. Jones' signature. So whoever did these covers, either way, I really like them. So i uh, really surprised I don't know that. Anyway, um... Growing up, another one that was one of my favorite books as a kid was uh, First Appearance of Bishop. I just really liked that character growing up. Um, uh, J. Scott Campbell uh, variant, Secret Wars, uh, Midtown Comics exclusive. And uh, we're going to kind of go this route. Um, Amazing Spider-Man, or Ama oh, sorry, uh, Spawn 221, which is uh, uh, the Amazing Spider-Man swipe cover. And got this beautiful uh, Spider Gwen variant. Um, then uh, this really awesome Wonder Woman variant. And uh, some one of my favorite artists, Dave Stevens, some of his artwork. And Thor, four hundredth issue. Um, God, who was the artist on that? Uh, Kirby, maybe. Um, I don't know, but it's just kind of a classic, uh, Friends and Breeding. Yeah, Friends and Breeding cover. It's just a really awesome Thor cover. And then over here, another, uh, Spider-Man. It's a Deadpool Spider-Man cover swipe. And keeping with the theme of Deadpool, we'll go Deadpool number one. And the other Deadpool number one. And Deadpool number 11, which is another Spider-Man cover swipe. As you can see, um, any kind of time I see a Spider-Man swipe for that, I'm going to basically get it because it's one of my favorite covers. Uh, Deadpool 34. I just grabbed some Deadpools that I liked. Um, surprised I didn't grab uh, another Deadpool book, but I'll, maybe it'll be in here. Uh, McFarlane, Spider-Man number one. Uh, gold version. Uh can't remember which one of those was worth the most but that's the one i got so uh uncanny x-men 244 first appearance of jubilee uh king size avengers if i remember right that's the first appearance of rogue and then i just got uh this awesome wolverine number eight i just think that's a cool cover uh spider-man um i can't remember amazing spider-man it's a one shot uh Scotty Young cover. And this was a free comic book day book. Uh, it's Infinity Wars. Um, one of uh, Thanos' um, first... Uh, one of his kids, maybe, was the first appearance of that. So, uh, let me set these over here. Um, Amazing Spider-Man 599. This is the second print variant. Uh, first appearance of Anti-Venom. I was going to go through a lot of these books and kind of look up the prices and stuff because I haven't looked at a lot of the values of any of these for a while. Um, but I did not do that. Get some more books here. Um, another art germ... Supergirl, number 12. Um, Dave Stevens, uh, Vanguard Illustrated cover. Dave Stevens cover. Uh, he's next to X-Men, number 80. And X-Men, uh, cannot tell you the name of this one. Or the uh, number on that one. But they're both basically just Chromium uh, covers. So... Like I said, you'll see a few of those in here. They're just some of my favorite books because of what they are. Uh, these were two of my favorite books growing up. Uh, these were the first two variant books that I ever got. So it's X-Men, Alpha, and Omega. Um, and it basically starts the, kind of, it's the Age of Apocalypse storyline. And when I was growing up, I didn't have a ton of money for comic books. And this was the one time I convinced my uh, parents to buy me a little bit more expensive comic book and I got both of these and um, I absolutely love them. 
even though they're not really worth much, they are to me. And same way with the next, these next few. Uh, these are the Fatal Attraction books. Um, this was one of my favorite books growing up. Uh, X-Men 25, where Magneto rips Wolverine's uh, adamantium out of his body. Uh, absolutely love that. And if I remember right, in this Excalibur, that's the one where maybe Colossus goes bad. Uh, and then X-Force 25. And X-Men, Uncanny X-Men 304. Um, one of my favorite storylines. Absolutely love those growing up. Uh, oh yeah. And X Factor 92. I don't know why I grabbed all of these. I could have just been just fine showing the X-Men 25, but, um, uh, I don't know why I threw this in here, but why not? True Believers, Wolverine vs. Hulk, number one first appearance of Wolverine reprint. Nothing. Dollar book. Um, so, uh, X-Factor, number 24, uh, first appearance of Archangel, and Uncanny X-Men 234, just a cool Wolverine cover. Uh, then, uh, Deadpool vs. Thanos variant cover, uh, this is, um, uh, Deadpool with uh, clouds from Final Fantasy VII's Buster Sword and uh, all the other kind of swords around him. I love that. Maybe that's not the look they were going for. Maybe it was, but either way, that's what it is to me. So, uh, X-Men 251, just a gorgeous Wolverine cover. Um, and it's kind of an iconic cover. Next up, got a couple Walking Dead books for you. A couple Walking Dead 100s. Um, just really cool covers. This one was my favorite out of the whole 100 wave. Uh, uh, then I got uh, another Walking Dead 100. And... Uh, this is a uh, Ninja Turtles IDW. Um, I can't remember what issue it was. Maybe it was issue 50. Uh, but it's a variant cover uh, of Leonardo um, with the blue bandana. Uh, this was from Blind Box Comics too, if I remember. I wanted all of these with the action figures. Um, unfortunately, I could not get my hands on all of them. Uh, then uh, an Art Germ cover. And... Uh, one of my favorite covers in the IDW Ninja Turtle series. I just really like that cover. There's been a lot of amazing covers in that. Uh, then uh, J. Scott Campbell, Sheena number one. And uh, Terry Dodson, Bombshells. And Amazing Spider-Man 32. And Vamprilla number 12. Um, uh, Mayhew cover. And Airboy number five, um, uh, Dave Stevens artwork. Uh, a lot of those last few books I went through quick because they were in my last haul video. So, uh, set these to the side here. Uh, then Hero Comics number, uh, well, it's not a number, it's 2011. Um, and that's the J. Scott Campbell beautiful artwork cover. Uh, this is another Art Germ cover, Batgirl number nine. Um, two of my favorite artists right there. And then Astonishing X Men number six, just a really cool cover. I think that actually is a J. G. Jones uh, cover. I'm gonna have to look those up. Uh. So next up, I'll show you the very few CGC books I have. Um, this is the uh, first appearance of Hellboy. Um, it's a 9.0. And then the first appearance of the Black Suit Spider-Man and also a cover swipe of Amazing Fantasy 15. Uh, it's an 8.5. And then uh, Spawn number one, 9.6. And that one uh, has the uh, Spawn poster. Uh, and also has a Pit and Spawn pinups in them. 
Um, let's go through these real quick. Uh, and you'll have to excuse these cases. They're not really for these, but I just haven't switched them out yet. Um, Amazing Spider-Man, uh, Tom McFarlane cover that's a Superman sw cover swipe, and an older uh, Tales of Suspense, Captain America and Iron Man, uh, I think it's number 59, if I remember right, that's the first appearance of Jarvis, and keeping up with the theme of older books in cases they do not belong in. Uh, Fantastic Four, uh, number 51, This Man, This Monster. And then just a really awesome cover of Avengers 58. Um, I still think I like that cover better, but just really kind of an older book. Um, next up. This, you just seen the variant of this one. So this is the, uh, it was like a 1 in, I want to say 1500 or 1 in, or uh, I'm sorry, it was a 1 in 200 or a 1 in 500. It was a super low print run, and it's the variant Leonardo cover from uh, Blind Box Comics. And then I got my uh, Amazing Spider-Man 25, um, J. Scott Campbell sign book. And also have... Uh, the same book uh, with the sketch remark. Um, that one is definitely in my uh, top 20s list. Um, next up, just some kind of cool books. Uh, Deadpool Encyclopedia. Um, just a, It was a tougher book for me to find whenever I was first starting to look for Deadpool books. And this one is signed by J. Lee, Ron Friends, and Pat Olaf. I made, uh, Spider, excuse me, Spider-Man Revenge of the Green Goblin, number one. And then I've got a Wolverine Hawk signed by, um, Richard Isenove. Um, those two last two books aren't really anything special, but. Then, uh, Wolverine, number 125, uh, J. Lee book, or signed by J. Lee, if I remember right, uh. Yeah, J. Lee. And up next, um, King Size X-Men number one. I can't remember what was important about this. Maybe it was the first appearance of Lucifer. I can't remember. Um, anyway, I'm going to move these out of the way here. And then I got a couple older X Men books. Um, X Men 30. I don't know why I even have that in here. X Men 31. Um, then I've got X Men 13. Uh, just an iconic, kind of classic cover. Um, X Men 28, first appearance of Banshee. And then. I know this has the tattoos in it, but I can't remember if this is the first appearance of Hob Hobgoblin or the death of Hobgoblin. I have both of those books somewhere, but uh, I can't remember which is which on those. Um, and then X-Men 100. And X-Men 14. Uh, first appearance of the Sentinels. And uh, Bucky O'Hare, number one, signed by Larry Hama. And uh, I think this was a cover. It was Charlie Adler, uh, Deadpool, number two variant cover. Uh, so it's kind of like a zombie Deadpool. Uh, with the whole Walking Dead thing that he basically started. Or first started drawing, I guess. Um, next... Uh, We'll go with these first. Um, X-Men number 75. Just another kind of classic X-Men cover. And X-Men 142, another 
classic X-Men cover. And Wolverine number one. And then we got... Um, so first appearance of Master Mold or Nimrod, something like that, in this one, I believe. Um, and then X-Men number 15, which I think had the origin, yeah, the origin of Beast on it. And X-Men number 10, uh, first appearance of Kazar. Um, these next two books are some of my favorites, but they're not in the best of condition, but they're okay. Good enough for me. Uh, X-Men number 7. I love that book. Move some of these out of the way here. And then I've got X-Men number 12, first appearance of the Juggernaut. And Wolverine number one. Uh, I want to say that was the Frank Miller one, run. I've got the full set of the Frank Miller run somewhere. Pretty sure that that's the Frank Miller, or was it the other one I had? I'm not going to look for it. Um, so, these next few books, uh, we'll get through a couple. Um, so, X Men 137 and New Mutants 87, first appearance of Cable. And a lot of people will say uh, that this next book is the first appearance of the Black Suit. So this one actually says, if you look, uh, it says first appearance of black costume for Spider-Man. But a lot of people will say it was Secret Wars number 8. So I can't really remember the dates. This one says December. And this one's May. Uh, I don't know the year. But if this one's December, this one's May. This one's definitely the first appearance. Um... I'm not sure what year each one came out, and I'm not going to take the time to look them up. Uh, all of these are going to be getting switched over to Mylar soon. Uh, just have not bought any Mylars yet. But either way, I've got the first, either one of the first appearance black suits. Um, next one, this was a really hard book to find for a long time. Uh, Ultimate Spider-Man number one. Uh, Mark Bagley, it was uh, signed. Uh, 121 out of 1962. Um, this is a hard book to find for a while. and Pretty pricey. Um, so the next, I'm going to say the next, uh, let's say s at least the next five or six books are some of my favorites. Um, they may not be the most expensive books in my collection, but uh, they are definitely some of my favorite books. So uh, New Mutants 98, first appearance of Deadpool. And uh, Daredevil, uh, what was that, number 181, uh, Death of Electra. I uh, had the full run of the Frank Miller Daredevil books, and at some point in time, um, I didn't really think most of them were worth anything, so I got rid of them for dirt cheap. Uh, this next book, or these next four books, uh, are books I never thought I'd be able to afford. Uh, this first one I'm going to show you is not in good condition, uh, or not in the greatest condition, but it's good enough for me, and I am very, very thankful to have it, because I never thought I would own this book. Um, so, Giant Size X-Men number one. Uh, everyone knows who that is. Um, I absolutely love, I didn't pay two fifteen for it, by the way. <laughs> That's how much the case was. But I absolutely love this book. Um... Even though it's not in good condition, I'm still very, very thankful to own it. So, um, the next three books I'm going to show you are my, actually, one of my favorites. I kind of miss. I haven't got it in a bag yet. Uh, it's Michael Turner, Supergirl cover. Um, anyway, so these next three books are probably three of my favorite books in my collection right now. Um, they are getting ready to go get CG Seed, uh, possibly. Um, so, we're going to slide these over here because that's a little bit bigger of a, yeah, screw it. Uh, uh, 
Uh, so, sorry about that. The phone kind of just went crazy on me. But uh, this is Ninja Turtles number three. Uh, first print. Um, this is not the silver. I think there was a silver version of this or something. Um, something kind of cool about it is I did get this book signed years ago by uh, Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman. Um, this book is getting ready to get sent off to uh, probably CGC. Um, I kind of want to send it to CBCS because of, uh, it's got signatures in it, but I've not heard good enough things about CBCS to send it to them. So I may just take the CGC unqualified grade or whatever they do with it. Uh, if you have any recommendations on where to send that, because it's an oversized book, um, so it would have a different tier to it, and it's got signatures on it, who would be the best place to send that to? Uh, I don't know. Um, so these next two books are hands down two of my favorite books in my collection. Um, I never expected to ever be able to afford to own these, uh, and I just guess I got lucky. So uh, Ninja Turtles, number two. Uh, the oversized first print. Um, really love these books. Uh, actually, I love Ninja Turtles ever since I was a kid, but I was definitely a lot older whenever I, before I ever found out that they were a comic book first. Um, and I don't know how old I was, but I was pretty dang old whenever I found out that they were like a black and white comic book. Um, but basically what I'm saying is, as a kid, uh, didn't even know these existed, so... But once I found out they did, I knew I had to track them down. And finally, my uh, ultimate grail in my collection, uh, the one comic book of my house is on fire that I would absolutely have to grab, is my Ninja Turtles number one. Um, can't believe I actually own that, because uh, I absolutely love this book. Um, like I said, it is the best thing in my entire collection. Uh, I, even out of all the toys and stuff I own, this is probably the one thing that I would actually have to run in the house and grab. Um, but anyway, so that is the end of my favorites video. I really do appreciate you guys taking the time to watch it. Um, please, if you're watching this and you liked it, give me a thumbs up, leave some comments. Uh, tell me what the favorite, your favorite book out of these was. Uh, if you have pictures of your favorite books in your collection, or video, whatever, um, leave them in the comments. I will definitely watch them. So, thank you very much. Bye.